Welcome into today's broadcast right here at Cog Hill Farm. Now, Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the house for this episode, so here's Jason, Brooke, and our chicken master, Mary Carl. What is up, everybody? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast, the homesteading podcast here on YouTube and everywhere else. Oh, uh, we got the chicken master with us today. She has been on vacation from the podcast for a few weeks now, but Mary Crawl is back. She decided, actually told me this morning that she wanted to be in the podcast today. So she is here. Uh, this is something she's been working on for a while now. Uh, so be ready for some chicken knowledge dropped. I would like to uh, say a couple of things. Number one, gray hats right over here. Uh, first of all, thank you guys so, so much for everything. Uh, we mentioned in the last podcast we had a couple of new hats out. And guys, within an hour, probably less than that, we were sold out. Uh, did not expect that at all. Actually, we ran out of boxes. I mean, we didn't think we'd sell that many hats. We just really didn't. That was crazy. But uh, we do got the gray ones, the large and the small in stock now. So check the website. Uh, those sold very, very quick last time. Uh, the ponytail hats, the lavender ponytail hats, they are on order. Uh, those are going to take a little bit longer than these to come in. Uh, hats are really hard to get. It's like everything else right now because of COVID. Hats are really hard to get, but we do got the gray ones in stock. We do have a few other ones. Uh, the red uh, snapback Richardson hat we have in stock and the distressed uh, trucker hat. We have uh, some of these in stock as well. So check the website on that. And other than that, I guess that's it. You got anything, Brooke? I'm just here for a seat. you just here for a seat? <laughs> yeah. I'll let y'all talk. Matter of fact, I got things to do. Y'all want me to leave y'all alone? <laughs> so, Mary Carl's going to drop some knowledge, and then we're going to answer a few questions and uh, go on with this awesome podcast. So, you know what the red thing on the top of the chicken's head is? It's uh-huh. kind of comb. Right. Um, and we're going to go over the purpose of a comb. Um. And the types, there are nine different kinds, which we'll get to eventually. <laughs> and really, the main thing is, what are they for? Um, is it just for decoration or what? So, you you hadn't grown yours yet. No, I hadn't. You're in the, in the process, though, right? <laughs> That's Maybe. why I always wear a hat. I cover mine up. Hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I cover my comb up. Okay. Yeah. What kind do you have? I got it. <laughs> He didn't know there was nine different kinds, so he's just a, a uniform kind of comb. Mine's a walnut. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what are combs for? Well, they have uh, several different purposes. And actually, the first ever animal to have a comb was the one of the last dinosaurs to ever live. You know, um, chickens look and act a lot like dinosaurs. Yeah. I mean, they're really, really... I mean, they closely related. Yes, very much so. I don't think a lot of people know that, but how closely related they are, but they are. Very much so. You know who's really closely related to dinosaurs? I do. Nugget. Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Nugget, I mean, he looks he looks like something you would see in Jurassic Park. He does. In an encyclopedia he when you go really to dinosaurs. Does. And you know, they recently discovered that dinosaurs had feathers. And they're thinking a lot more of them had feathers than what they originally thought. Yeah. But but Nugget doesn't have a comb. No, he doesn't. But a cassowary has a semi-comb, yes. with some mm-hmm. kind of knot up there, which right, is yeah. close related to Nugget. So if they have multiple purposes, what, what are some of them? Can I take a guess at one? Yeah. To, to cool off, to like a yes. transfer heat. Look at um, that. Ha! One. I didn't even know that. I get to guess the second one. You guess one. I'm going to read on. first so I can Let get me good... explain <laughs> what it is. I didn't even read is. anything. Oh, we're going to mess her up. We don't want to mess her up. <laughs> so, it's a very, very unique part of chickens. It's it is. Really, if you didn't see a chicken with a comb, you'd be like, what's that? Because you're so used to seeing a chicken with a comb. It looked like a crazy pigeon. It would. Yeah. <laughs> it really would. Um, but there are so many different ones. And some chickens are 
let's say for expedition um their combs aren't necessarily needed for this and you dub them which means remove their comb and it actually makes a chicken look so much better but i don't know if it's good for them yeah <laughs> so kind of cruel, it? yes don't like that. and it it's a old english game and modern game thing so if you've got yeah. one of those breeds and you want to show it then it better be dubbed yes they really will, yeah. but that's not the thing with some of these unusual comb types and those both have single so with your unusual combs you're probably going to not see them being dubbed so it's just a part of the way they are yes and yes daddy that does help with the heat yes chickens cannot sweat is you probably would think if you, they did, they would be like little wet rat looking things going everywhere. <laughs> so what's the comb do? <clears throat> it controls their body temperature. Um, it's a very vital organ to a chicken because it'd be like your liver or something. You know what? It, how I figured it, well, my educated guess was is I used to love car stereos when I was in my younger days, I mean, loved and I tinkered around with it. And amplifiers, the vent, the vents or the ridges on an amplifier remind me of that comb, and that's why amplifiers are made like that. So heat can escape. And it, that's heat because air can flow through the vents or the channels, oh. and it it cools them off or cools that amp off, and that's what a chicken comb reminded me of. That's how I took that guess, and I was so, correct. So if we touch a chicken's comb, would it be hot? If it's hot outside? Yes, and it is. Um, I was had my little chicken bell outside yesterday, and it was pretty hot outside. And her little comb was hot, and she has a single comb, which is pretty tall. It's like that tall for a hen. Um, and it, it was just, that's how they control their body temperature. And it, their combs, if you live in harsh, cold conditions, they do have a tendency to get frostbite. Um so, the, you know, that's why we've mentioned in the past that when you're buying chickens, um, one of the main things that people don't ever think about, because they'll go to a feed store or a tractor supply and they got all these chicks there, is look for ones that match your climate because these stores just get shipped in what these hatcheries send them or, you know, that kind of thing. And you may get a cold weather chicken in a hot weather climate and it's going to struggle. It's and, not going to And make vice it. versa. If you get a warm weather chicken or in a cold weather, then it could be prone to frostbite and all that kind of good stuff. So it really does make a difference. So kind of do your homework on that when you're looking for yes. chickens. Yes. And one other thing about these feed stores and hatcheries is tractor supply gets bantams a lot and i was looking at them the other day and a lot of them don't have the right kind of combs um let's say there was a black rose comb bantam um they might have a single comb and i've seen that a lot and it's mainly with rose combs um like you're the anvers rose comb bantams and seabrights i have a seabright hen that doesn't have the proper comb so if you're getting your bantams and let's just say bantams because that's the most frequent thing I see it with. Um, you want to make sure you have that right kind of comb if you want to have breeding chickens. A true a true bloodline. Or you may want to just go to a breeder that's yes. specific in that type of breed. Yes, yeah. unless you don't have a breeder around, kind of like us. Yeah. Um, you just... Do the best you can. Yeah. Or so, you could order hatching eggs. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but there still is a chance you're going to get a wrong comb somewhere. Right. Um, it happens with my silky sometimes. Um, I'll get a single comb in with it, and I really don't know how because all of my silkies, I try to keep that walnut comb gene. Mm -hmm. So if you have one that comes out without a walnut comb, you don't breed that one, correct? Correct. Because um, you don't want to put the that that gene back yes. in your breeding. Yes. Same with the amount of toes. Mm-hmm. Also, their comb, um, let me find it. I know what it is, I just don't know how to explain it. D they're different colors of combs. Um, you have silkies who have blackish combs, and seabrights. They have the seabright hens have purplish combs. And 
these your cone color can indicate in like diseases and stuff. So if you have one of these dark colored combs, how are you gonna know if you have frostbite or not? Well, you if you felt your chicken's comb, you really know what it feels like. It's kind of warm. Um, Even and, in the cold weather, it would be warm. Yes, and it's going to be uh, kind of like mushy feeling. Kind of like, sort of like your earlobe. Yes, sort of kind. That's a yeah. good way to explain it. So it's going to feel like that, and if you want to know if your chicken with dark skin has frostbite, it might feel dry or crinkly feeling. And that also is an indication of worms and lice. So combs have a lot of blood flow in them, which I've kind of realized after I've had chickens for a long time. Um, If the roosters get beat up by each other, um, it's going to be a... When they peck their comb, it's like blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not going to kill them if they bite their comb, but it's a lot of blood. And I've noticed when roosters do fight that that's typically one of the first things they go after. They just, you know, just grab the comb and pull and whatnot. Yes, it is. And hens, too, when they're hens too. their pecking yeah. order, just their spot to pick them. Mm-hmm. And what is a Hang on, let me find it. So when you get a chick, it's kind of hard to tell what their comb is because it's just a little, it's a little thing about that tall. So it amazes <laughs> me when we go and and get chicks sometimes, you say, can I see that one? And you get them to hold it up close and you're looking at their comb and you know what you're looking for. <laughs> it's a, <clears throat> I've been looking at them for a long time. Um <laughs> I figured out which combs are which by myself the other day. I can't tell. And it it really, for example, rose combs are different. Mm -hmm. It's for a seabrite, which is one of your rose comb chickens, it's like a really lumpy like. kind of looks like a walnut, so it's hard to tell. And a rose comb bantam, I have to say bantam behind it because it sounds like I'm talking about a rose comb. (laughs) Um, There's a chicken called a rose comb. Yes. That's that's what she's meaning, yeah. Oh, okay. And a, yeah. the rose comb chicken, their comb actually looks like a rose. So it's confusing, the rose combs. Um, and you're going to get into all the combs here in just a minute. Yes. Yeah. It's really weird that they have different types. I honestly don't know why. Um, and one of the other reasons that chickens have different have comb types is because of the um the males have a larger comb so they can attract a female mate and it's really if you were a chicken and your boyfriend had a big comb you'd be happy <laughs> so, <laughs> you hear that boys <laughs> so that's a maybe good i ought to, to uncover my comb you now. might should yeah. <laughs> So it's a symbolism of strength and power for mm. a chicken to see that. Um, kind of like Scott and his tail. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a peacock thing, too. It's up tails. Mm-hmm. So think, tell us about some of the different kinds of combs. Yeah, for that, this is interesting. Research has shown that hens with larger combs can be more dominant. Really? Which is very true and sometimes can lay more eggs. Really? <laughs> like my, who's a dominant chicken? Astrid? Goat. Astrid. Goat. Oh, yeah, goat. Goat's comb is about this tall. And she's, she's very a hen. Dominant. She's Bale's very dominant. mom. Yes, her comb is very big. And it actually runs in Bell's and her family's mm. genes to have the big combs. And to be dominant. Yes. <laughs> very dominant. I know uh, Bell's mama run, rules that little roost. Her mm-hmm. name's Duchess, right? Yes, and it, she sits on some unfertile eggs. Hmm. My rooster isn't even to age, so... The comb types are single, which is your most common. You're going to see this comb on most any chicken that is your usual. So, Dinner. Rhode Island Reds. Rhode Island Reds. Um, rocks. Um, and, and for those listening to the podcast, she's holding up pictures of the comb. So, if um, you may have to go back and watch it yeah. or Google it. Yeah. So... 
Next up is a pea comb. A pea comb. Um, it's a small comb. This one's fairly common, I think. Yes, it is. Not um, as common as the single, but this this one's fairly common in my opinion. Your Brahmas, Americanas, Ericanas, um, there's so many more. Buckeyes. 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 They all have a pea comb. Yes, and it looks like little peas in a pod. Jason, you might want to turn that light facing another way, so I don't know if you can actually see that or not. All right, that's good. So that's a pecone. That's a pecone. Yes. That's a weird looking one. Mm-hmm. This is the walnut. This um, is what a silky has, right? Yes, a silky and a Orloff. Have a big old, looks like they got a big old brain on the outside there. Yes, head. it does. And sometimes silky will have a pink comb or a red, which is not the right color. And it You're... reminds me and my friend Piper of the red mulch. <laughs> That's what it looks like, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> red mulch, yeah. <laughs> or a dead leaf. It's so funny. <laughs> now, I find this one to be pretty cool. This one is. This one is the buttercup. Yes. And it, um... It's it, one chicken only has it. Yes. Sicilian, Sicilian buttercup. buttercup. Sicilian buttercup. And it, for those listening, it looks like your hand yeah. open and cupped open like that. It does. Yeah. And it's at, they're in critical need of conservation. Mm-hmm. Because they're they're going extinct fast, right? Yes. yes. We used to have that breed. We did. They were very flighty. Um, mm. They were beautiful chickens. Um, very very flighty and they're, laid small white eggs. Yes. Yeah. They're almost. They're very small chickens. They were very general. small chicken. <clears throat> so this one is the strawberry comb. Yes, of a melee. Um, or a Yokohama, which we have one of those. We do have a Yokohama. I don't know if that's... Oh, Yokohama? Okay. Yeah. It is a Yokohama on uh-huh. the, this strawberry. Um, and it looks like a strawberry. Our Yokohama... It really does. It's a beautiful chicken. The male Yokohamas are gorgeous. And they have these long tails, and mm-hmm. I believe they're Japanese chicken. Because most be. of your Japanese chickens have beautiful long tails. So beautiful long tails. And that is because they're ornamental garden chickens. Right. They would raise them in gardens. And think they, your daddy will let you get some of those to put in his garden? Yeah. You think? <laughs> They'll make it beautiful. Yeah. Have one of those fancy cages and the tail hanging down on the mm-hmm. outside. Uh-huh. Of now we're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and even the hens have a long tail. Our little Ono, she has a long tail. She, she does. does. She's a beautiful chicken. Mm-hmm. All right. And this one is the rose comb? Yes. And it's a good cold weather comb because um, you're going to get a... It's not necessarily easy to get frostbit. And... And because it's closer to the head, but some and they're of your, flatter too, aren't they? Yes, they are. And some of your rose comb chickens have a like my hand right here is the comb, and this is the point. The point is supposed to go straight back, but sometimes they'll go up, and that's not how it's supposed to be. So. And it doesn't look like a rose. It looks like a teardrop. Well, I guess it could look like a rose hilt, maybe, or maybe it's a rose yeah. closed is what it's supposed to look like. I think like. so. Or a thorn. Oh, it could be a rose thorn. You know what? I believe you're right on that one. Because it, it does go like this. and It's pointed on one end and big, uh, like, mm-hmm. like a teardrop. And yeah. Dominique's wand dots are... No, I, I don't think Dominique's have one. It says it. Wand, oh, yeah. I didn't know where you were looking. You thought Mama was pulling that out of her head, yes, didn't you? Yes, I did. You was like, Mama. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> reading, Mary Carl. I'm reading. No, Dominique's look, do not look like they have a rose comb. I thought it was a pea. I thought it was a pea, too. Well, um, y'all learned something every day, don't you? We did learn something. You know, a lot of times people have barred rocks and think they have Dominique's or Dominickers is another old-timey name for them, but they got single combs. So that's how you can tell if you got a true Dominique or not. And this is also something. I got some Dominiques from Chapter Supply last year, mm-hmm. and one of them has a single comb. So that was more likely a barred rock. Yes. Or it got mixed breed. Or it got breed. mixed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily mixed breed, but... Or it um, could be a genetic mutation. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was yeah. trying to say. This is the cushion comb, and which this one, is obviously cushion because it looks like a cushion. It does look like a little pillow. <laughs> Very <laughs> small, and this is one of the... That Chanticleer, I, I think that's how you say it. This is Chancellor, one of the, isn't it? It I may it's be, because it's a Chancellor. French breed, I think. So your mom may be right. Yeah. Um, you know how I am a, with that 
protege and Mama stuff like that. Mama is our French expert here. She, By the way, she knows the way of, of speaking French language. I do. It's protege. <laughs> but this one's very coat tolerant. Yeah. Matter, as matter of fact, I want to say this one's closely related to Canada and the French providences mm-hmm. over there and stuff. But yeah, this one. Um, He's been doing his research, hasn't he? You know, I used to be heavy, hardcore into heirloom breeds. And so I know a good bit about the older varieties. This one is the V-comb, right? This one right. is the V-comb. This one's super cool. Said they also call it the devil's horn. Uh, yes. Yeah, looks like Lucifer. It's, um, it's looks like Loki. Do, yeah, it a, does. Looks like Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't a Polish have a V comb? It does. The it hens, does. you would not even know. Yeah. I have this little Polish mixed breed. He's a cream leg bar Polish mix, and he is so funny looking. Is it looks like a one? buttercup kind of that's falling over, and it's V like. It's weird. The, He's on the last video. The curly one. The, yeah, the he pretty, is. Yeah, yeah. It may be the one coming out. I can't remember. No, no, no. It was I in the read, last one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's so funny looking. He is a weird looking chicken. His I'm crest, not going to lie. His comb falls over this way and his crest goes that way. It is crazy. And he's curly. He's curly all, all over. over. And he's got 15 different colors. Yes. <laughs> and his tail is like this tall. He's and it very sticks crazy straight look. up in the air. <laughs> I must say, though, the Polish roosters are the coolest looking rooster because they got that big hairdo that big afro yes and it usually falls over to and one side got the, uh, devil's horn sticking out yeah i mean they're just really really cool looking with with just uh, i remember the first time we got polishes and roosters and mary carl was really 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 little and matter of fact we got them from holly's and i remember when they became roosters i was just floored how Wicked they looked. It was just crazy. It just they look really cool. Right now I don't have any Polish roosters, but they are really funny. They are. My hens are not the brightest tools in the city. Yeah, they're and they think that there's a nesting box up under the roosts about a foot off the ground. Mm-hmm. But there's not. So they try to get to this invisible nesting box that's not there. So they jump up the wall. About five minutes, and then they'll sit down on the ground and dig them a little hole and lay their egg. Then they'll be back on the Polish world. I think that their vision is just yeah. not very it's good. Not. It's exactly what it is. They these these chickens that have these huge crests, and I, I would say the Polish is probably the biggest because it covers everything up. Um, they have a hard time seeing, and that's one reason you know we've had people ask, "How come we don't free range the polishes? How come we and don't the free silkies. and the silkies?" And they have a really hard time seeing. So if a predator was to come up, uh, especially a flying one, they, they would be easy it. pickings. I mean, it would be, you know, they, they would get picked off pretty quick. So we kind of keep those guys, you know, kind of locked up, so they don't get. I got. have a. Um Polish hen, Cotton, Mm -hmm. who is an old lady, and she lived outside forever and ever and ever. And I have some younger ones that have never touched the ground. Yeah. I mean, they've been raised inside their whole life. So they're going to continuously be raised inside. But Cotton got to where she was beat up so bad in the free range world. Yes. And that's another thing. I bring her inside. You're right. And she's just so skittish that. I don't know how she was. Th- that's just how she lives. Is they're yeah, kind of scared of everything because they, they have, can't, they have be. a hard time mm-hmm. seeing, and that's why they're like that. And 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 that's another reason we kind of keep them separated because the 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 hens, especially the the queen bees, they will wear them out because they're mm-hmm. easy pickings. They're such an easy target. Same with the silkies; they, they, they get picked on pretty good too. They sure do. And this, is this the last comb that you're talking yes, about? Yes, this is. Okay. This is you know what? the carnation comb. I've and never heard of this one. Me neither. And I have this breed. Um, I can't read whatever this says on here. Car- it says Car- carnation. Oh, yeah, it does. I trying to think it was a different chicken breed. So what breed do you have that has this comb? The Pendensinka. It's the really Pendensinka. most visible on the rooster more than the hen because the it's like... Just a little comb about that tall on my hens. They have a small comb. And they are very hardy. They're just hardy chickens. Pinsinkas. Well, I tell you, we found this breed. Was it last year or year before? 
I think it was last year, and I was like, Mama, please call Tractor Supply. Well, actually, please call Tractor Supply. We went in there, and we saw what they had, and we went out to the car because we had never heard it. The no, never heard no, of the no, no. You called, and it, Jennifer was there, and she said, there's something I can't pronounce, P-E-N-D-S-E-N-C-A. And y'all and, looked it up here? Yes, and they laid one of the darkest eggs of chickens. Um, it's way darker than your French copper morons and stuff. I think um, we purchased six of them, and all six of eight. them. Eight. We have six now. I think two of them were Predator God, I think. Yeah. But they are pretty hardy. They are pretty hardy. They're a little bit flighty. They're just not very friendly in general. You know, most, but they are hardy chickens. Most of your old heritage breed chickens are flighty. Mm-hmm. Um, through breeding and genetics... You know, they've, they've bred that out of a lot of these chickens, and that's why they're friendly. Mm-hmm. But most of, like, a, your, your newer breeds sort of like barred rocks, and they've barred rocks are so popular now that they just bred them to, they're pretty friendly. And your new Rhode Island Reds, you can find a heritage breed of Rhode Island Red, and to me it looks different than the ones mm-hmm. you get now because the old ones are a little bit smaller, and they're deep, deep red versus this lighter red and bigger chicken. And also, they are... Uh, red, black-tailed, red breed, um, which means their coloration is red body with a black tail. Um, if you're familiar with the Japanese Bantam, you are used to that white chicken with the black tail. It's going to be like that. It's a red, deep red. Yeah, it's like what are burgundy. you referring to? The Pendensinka? No, the Red Island Red Island oh, Reds. Okay. Because they have a dark black tail and a dark, deep red body mm-hmm. for uh, um. Heritage Rhode the Island. Old, yeah, the Heritage Rhode and Islands. And now, they're just like red. red. Yeah, they look very similar to a the the red hybrids, like mm-hmm. a red six link, exactly. or sometimes they're called... Um, what red else? Star. Red Stars. There's all different names. They're all, and they're all pretty yes. much the same chicken. They just, you know, whichever hatchery you get them from, names them something different. Yeah. But that, that um, Pen and Sinka lays the darkest of dark brown eggs that we collect yes. and that's an italian breed isn't it you know it's spanish I, it may it's be spanish spanish or italian i got you but we are very impressed with that breed and very impressed they with lay that breed. a lot they do lay a lot really the strange thing is as they age their egg color lightens mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. well you know you you bred some of those with corny to and create an olive egg. Yes, I have my little chicks in the GQF breeder right now. Um, they're just now getting their feathers. So um, it'll be interesting to see what color I olive. It will be interesting to see what colors those I'm are. I'm hoping I'm getting a deep olive, like a golden. Because mm. Corny has that blue egg laying mm-hmm. gene. He does. Because he is a what? Cream leg bar. A cream leg bar. And then the Pendensinka, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct, mm-hmm. has the dark egg, dark brown. So the dark brown and the blue should make a green, right? Yes. Um, and that technically. Was, technically. Yeah. And that was kind I of would, an experiment of yours. It is. I would be okay. I would be happy if it was all green, just usual green. But I would be even so happy if it was like golden green. I've seen pictures of yes. those eggs and it's... They're beautiful. Yes, it is beautiful. They are beautiful. And you like that variety in your eggs, don't you? Yes, I do. And yeah. I also have been breeding my little cream lug bars, and I've got some chicks almost grown up. So I'm interested to see if their eggs are going to be Darker. light blue or dark blue. Got gotcha. you. So well, they, they, they classify that as a first generation, second generation in yes. order to continue mm-hmm. that color and to create a darker, more bold egg. I don't know what color Corny's egg gene is because he's a rooster. Um, so if he has a dark egg, if he has a dark blue, my chicks that I've hatched could have a dark blue. So I'm hoping they'll have some dark blues. We shall see. We shall yes. see. And about five, well, I guess it'll be about four months from now, we should know more about your project. Yes, we will. And uh, <laughs> hopefully if they lay some cool eggs, we will bring them and show them on the podcast. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Mary Carl, did you want to stay with us, or do you want to? We're going to go over some questions. Mm-hmm. You don't want to stay? No. Okay. Well, we appreciate you joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely, and educating all of us. That's right. All right. Dropping some Maybe... major chicken knowledge. Maybe you'll join us on the next one, right? Yeah. 
if you can find something interesting to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's push that back, and you turn okay. her off. Okay, got her turned off. Oh. I'm going to come real close. I see that. We head butted there. Did, Glad Jean did. knocked me out. It didn't hurt. I got such a hard head. <laughs> so, here we are. Here we are. Here and we are. You know, I want to say something real quick. Because I want, it's not I, gonna be quick. I no, he's gonna, I don't rattle. <laughs> um, I do. I want to let people know because you know, I'm not a master gardener. I make mistakes. Things happen, and you know, my garden's not perfect and beautiful and and like Martha Stewart or anything like that. I'm just a typical old gardener. And yesterday, picking squash, I realized that I got squash boards this year. Um, I used to not have squash borers. They showed up at my place. I actually quit growing squash because it was just, I couldn't beat them. And the last two years, I have not had squash borers. I got them this year. Uh, I think it's because of the rain we've had. Uh, as you guys know, I do an organic uh, pest control. And rain is not its friend because it doesn't have great residual so when it rains it just washes away and we've had probably up, up until the last few days it's probably rained seven ten days straight it's fixing it off and on so much, yeah it's fixing the rain straight. so they got me they got you they got me but um th- that being said we have consumed a whole lot of squash we have consumed a whole lot of squash so it wasn't lost it wasn't lost plus i was late growing squash that's another way that you can battle squash borers is start your seedlings early in seed trays and plant as soon as you can get them in the ground before those little wasps or moths they look like wasps come and lay their eggs at the base of your squash plants and you can beat them that way too and I didn't do that, so. Well, we had too much rain to plant early. We had too much rain to plant. That's exactly right. So we just rolled we, the dice. We picked and our battle, and the squash boars run, won. Squash boars got me. But not before we got to eat a lot of squash. Yes, absolutely. But so I we'll, did, tr- we'll but try I, again next yeah, year. Yeah, we'll try again next year. And all's not lost. We've even talked about we're going to pull the squash up and replant. either plant some cucumbers or yes, corn. Yes, yes, yes. So it's not lost. Cucumbers, good. corn, or I thought of something else, and I couldn't remember what it was. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> so, um, we were going to answer a few questions that okay. y'all have. You talked about a spring on the property. Can't you tap into that? All right, so. And this is talking about the pond we're thinking about building. Um, if you don't, guys, miss the podcast, we're having a uh, gentleman come down. We got a spot we like to build a pond. And he's going to dig about four foot down and see if he hits water. All right. So this is um, this is our 40 acres. I don't know if you can see that. That's the 40 acres. Uh huh. All right. This X right here yep. is about where the spring is. That's right. This X right here is about where we would like for the pond to be. Correct. That is absolutely too far to tap into yeah. to fill the pond you up. may can't see it on here but that is a uh it's a good long distance from the house big time it um, is um so you know plus it's plus it's really wooded it's really wooded and and he told us because he said that actually that stream that creek stream or whatever it is that runs through there begins right there which me and Mary Carl found that that's right and he said that since that water flows on down and goes no telling how long, you know, on other people's property and all this, that, that there would be a good chance that the government would get involved and we would have to follow and abide by all these rules because of, of course, contamination, you know, even though we're stewards of the property, we wouldn't dump or anything like that in this pond but we still would have to abide by the rules and i think it would be more so that the the environmentalists would be concerned with when they're digging with heavy equipment oil being you know hydraulic fluid anything can happen anything can happen so so there would be a lot of testing being done to make sure that the water wasn't being polluted and may or may not happen but it would just um it just may involve a little more than what we would be willing to put into it so that is the reason why we're staying away from that area. Um, it, talking to this guy, you know, if this spot don't work out, I think we'll have other spots 
that yeah. we can build upon that's that's away from the natural underground spring that's coming up. That's right. Because he said there's veins, and I didn't know it did like that, but there's veins underground, and that's the springs. And he said that that area is known for it, and I had a good feeling that if we didn't hit it here, I think we're going to be okay. I really do. I don't know why I think that, but I think we are. And I think he seemed to feel yeah, you know, feel I think I, sort of confident about it. I felt that way too, and I fe- also feel like he's kind of eager to get over there and um, to to look because yeah. he wants to know himself. He wants to know himself. I agree. So, um, you have not said what you think about your new internet since it's been installed. Is it way faster with your uploading? All right, we we, we just didn't talk about it. We talked about going over there and and you having anxiety and the man oh, installing yeah. it, but yes, we true. didn't say anything about the outcome. We didn't. Okay, number one, it's extremely fast. I mean, it's I could upload to YouTube. I could I uploaded like three videos at one time in fifteen minutes. That typically would have taken me one of our videos takes about six to 10 hours here. So we're going from six, 10 hours to 15 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's cause it's fiber optic. It's wired. It's a fiber optic wire that runs down the pole and comes straight into the camper. So there's no, see ours now is wireless. So it's coming in through, through cell signals, what it is now, but this is not wireless. This is straight wired. And yeah, it's extremely fast. Now, I'm having issues with Facebook. Not that it won't upload to Facebook because it uploads way faster than Facebook. Facebook was taking me, y'all, almost 24 hours plus to upload a video to Facebook. Here, it's taking two to three hours. But, and it's Facebook. It's the same exact video. But what I, in matter of fact, I told you I had mm-hmm. a, a, a light bulb right. went off when I was driving back home because I've been driving over there by myself, me and Arlo, and uploading videos. And a light bulb went off that, you know, I make my videos for YouTube and then and then I turn around and upload them to Facebook as well because we got a ton of Facebook fans. Well, YouTube standards are way higher than Facebook standards. So I was uploading a big, huge file to Facebook and it couldn't handle it. So it was redoing my file and making it smaller. And I think that is why it's taking so long. So today, actually, when we leave here, we're going to the 40. And I think I'm right. So I'm going to test my theory today and see what happens. But I think I'm right. So I'm going to make a smaller file for Facebook versus the bigger file for YouTube and we'll see what happens. But it's way fast. Y'all, it is so, 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 so fast. So the only fast. part of that that I understood is that it's fast. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> somebody asked, you just answered their question, yeah. by fiber optic, do you mean 5G? It's no. It's nothing to do with 5G, No, it's just it? straight wired. It's coming off the pole, coming straight to our camper. Um, there's <laughs> nothing wireless you know, it's just straight in. So it's just, it's just that's why it's so fast because gotcha. it's just not traveling through the air. Um, it's just plugged straight in, so it it can go. I mean, we're going from from download speed ten megabytes tops here to a thousand there. So that's how much faster it is. That's pretty fast. It's fast. All right. Um, do we have a super secure fence around our new place to keep Nugget in? Is what if he gets scared and bolts at the new place? And then what are your plans to introduce Nugget and Scott to your new place? I'm uh, going to draw while you answer this. You do that. Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, we do have a secure fence. The no part meaning is that we got to mend some of it. Um, so, yeah, the whole 40 acres is fenced in. But over time, uh, since it had been lived at in four years or longer, that uh, it's, it's some trees have fallen down. It's gotten some overgrown places. So we know we're going to have to mend fences in. I, Nugget's going to be fine. Nugget's going to be absolutely fine. Scott, we're going to have to be careful with. Uh, we plan on building a large pen, flight pen for the peacocks. Um, we have been told by some peacock people that once they get settled in, that we more likely can let Scott out it's because the females will be here and he's not going to leave them. Um, but if we were to just turn them all loose, then all of them would probably leave. 
They would, except for peaches. Except for peaches. Um, <laughs> nugget. I don't think nuggets going to go anywhere. I really don't. Plus, but we're we will have make it. We will for have too. it all secure. Yeah. It will all be ready. No worries. Um, we will have the fence secure before we move anything over there. We've told y'all before that our animals are our first priority, and we're going to have that housing situated before we just go over there and turn them loose. Plus, our plan is is not to turn everybody loose on the whole forty acres. That's right. We're going to have be- you know areas set up because we got so much room now. We can do it. You know, the goats will have their own pasture That's area. Right. Um, the chickens will have their own area now. The so- turkeys can have their own area. So it should be, it should be really, really. St- better for everybody i think i look at it like this everything will be a fence inside of a fence yeah it will be the whole 40 will be fenced and then they will have their individual fenced off areas Correct. inside that fence yeah. it's kind of like the garden and the pigs now yeah very similar to the garden the videos, and the pigs then now. you see yeah. where the garden is fenced off and then the pigs are fenced inside that fence and then there's another fence on the outside yep. so it, it's kind of triple fence i guess you would triple fence and and the pigs are doing well yes pigs are doing really really well Will the pond be north, south, east, or west of the house facing? Okay, so my crude drawing <laughs> shows this is, fix that. This is the road. Uh huh. All right, the house will be setting back off the road. Uh-huh. You can't see how far, but that's just a general idea. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is the front. If this is the front of the house and it faces towards the road, that faces towards the west. Right? Because the sun rises rises in the the east and sets sets in the the west. west. So our house would be facing the sunset. Correct. That means the pond would be to the south of the house. Correct. If he hits water and the pond goes right there. Correct. Behind us would be the east. Yep. And then on this side where the, um, I guess, garden and pig area and everything is, is facing the north. Right? It's not really facing the north, it's but it's north of our house. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's north of the house. Northwest. So, so that kind of gives you an idea as to what we're what we're thinking. Our house, um, you know, you when you see a house and it's not facing the road, you kind of feel like the house is facing the wrong way. Yeah. It, yep. And I think it's just everybody's general. It's just the way it is. Correct. I mean, most houses face the road. So if we turn our house and we face the pond, is it going to be like that house is facing the wrong direction? Yeah, well, and and that may change. That may change. Um, we and it have, all depends on if we do build a pond. We may catty corner it a little bit. Yep. We may turn it semi towards the road, semi towards the pond. We could do that. We can do that. Uh, and plus, we've got an architect now that's willing to meet us. At out the there pond, yes. and give us ideas and he can get an idea where we want to put the house and so he may come up and say hey look you know we can do it this way this way this way the, you know the guy that's looking at the pond who's been in construction for all these years he said do a three-quarter porch you know we wanted a front porch just a general front porch and then a screen and back porch but he was saying do a three-quarter porch that wouldn't not a complete wraparound porch but have a front and the side kind of like this and then um, the side porch would be Facing the pond. Just a little bit of uh, porch on this side. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe a porch across the front. Correct. But that way we wouldn't have to have all the porch. Right. On the side. Just a little so we could enjoy the view of the pond. And we liked that idea too. We did like that idea. We did. But it's getting exciting because we we are starting to feel like we're coming together. We are coming together. Um, And too, I don't know if you guys have been watching it, but the price of lumber is going down. It has. um, It's gradual, which is what we want, Mm -hmm. rather than a big, hefty fall. Yes. Um, We hope it continues on that trend, and for the economy's sake, doesn't bottom out. Right. That would not be good. You know, nobody wants to see. Plus, too, generally, if it does bottom out, this is just my thinking, and I'm not no economist, but if it bottoms out, I think you may have everybody all of a sudden just jump in and try to start building stuff. That would be And then it could skyrocket right back again. Yeah, so because supply gradual, would be yeah. low. Yeah. So yeah. gradual is what you want. Gradual so is what gradual you want. Gradual is what we want. Um, You're so busy. When do you sleep? Oh, gosh. You know, we talked about this before. I don't know how we got things done like we did now. And we are extremely busy. And there's a lot going on, you know, 
outside of what you guys see. What you guys see. You know, we're trying, you know, we're, we're, we're going to sell this place when, you know, eventually when we get everything, our ducks in a row. And this, you know, we just want to touch up stuff here and there. Things and do that this we stuff. have wanted to, yeah. well, not wanted, but needed to take care of over time. Um, there's some deck boards that need to be restained. Yeah. Um, there's some dirt that's showing that we want to put some grass out Correct. And, and cover that up and make it look, you know, nice and pretty. Your first thing when you look at a house that's for sale is curb appeal. Yes. And you drive down somebody's driveway and you see a bunch of dirt. That's not that's not curb appeal. Right. So we're trying to get that dirt covered up with some sod mm-hmm. and, and get that grass growing and rooted in and um, just some things that we've needed to do over time. Just, yeah, it is. And, it, and it's your house. You know, you've been, you know, you, y'all know this. You've been living there forever. You know that that little paint Paint spot on the wall needs to be touched up but it doesn't bother you you know you've just been living there forever so that's right just stuff like that and it takes a lot of time it does especially Um, when you got uh, uh, another job going on i mean it's like you got three jobs now instead of one job so that's been going on behind the scenes and we and you know quite frankly we don't think that y'all would want to see us touching up paint in the house or putting out sod either so <laughs> that's why we haven't shown it that's right but that's going on and then of course the youtube channel the facebook page all all our stuff we're everywhere now and, and I t- the, the 40 the 40 yeah having to go over you yeah. know on a daily basis and m- check on the pigs make sure everything's okay over there we know they're not going anywhere now um, yeah we put a video out about did they stay we feel like they're there they know their boundaries. They are adapted to the fence that we've put around it to know that that they're you know it's electric fence. And I've and and I've had people question, you know that they they didn't I won't say they didn't like, but the fact that we're so that we're not living there that you know they kind of question us putting pigs out there and stuff. But you know I look at it. There's no different than cows, really. I mean, oh, people there's have lots cows. of people that have cows that um, don't live there. Plus, I'm going out there. Every day. I mean, almost every single day because I'm uploading. And plus, I'm checking on things. And plus, you know, I found out Arlo loves going out there. (laughs) So me and Arlo have been loading up. And I've been taking him out there. And he absolutely enjoys it. So, And I enjoy going out there, too. So um, this was probably the last question that Mm -hmm. we have. But we've answered this before. They're talking about my mom. Mm -hmm. Why... Do we never see your mom? It'd be so much fun to meet her and involve her in some things. How in the world are you going to be able to move all your stuff to the new farm? All right. First of all, about my mom. She simply is not interested in being on camera. Bottom line. She's not at Um, all. If somebody's not interested in doing something, you don't try to encourage them to do it. We have no problem with that. We hope y'all understand it. I just, um, I don't know any other way to say it except for she's not interested and therefore we don't do it. Um, it's not something that we see transitioning right. into her doing because she's just not interested. I will say this, though. She's a lot more comfortable about what we do and the camera being around and that kind of thing. Well, she you know, realizes it's our life. Six, and she, months ag- six months ago, she wasn't this comfortable. Six, and, six months ago, she would say, y'all aren't going to get me in that, in- are yeah, you? Yeah. And she might be standing behind us when we're right. doing something, filming, but she just steps out of the way. So, y'all, yeah. I mean, just she understand. She doesn't say that anymore. Just no. understand yeah. that, you know, she's not going to be on the camera. If that she, changes, we'll let you know. But, yeah. you know, that's just how it is, and everybody's different. And with all of our personalities, that's what makes the world go around. Right. So. Um, how do we plan on what was the other one? No, that's it. How in the world are we going to be able to move all oh, our stuff? Oh, 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 oh. We hope to be gradual. That's what we're hoping. Yes. We're hoping to be gradual. I think our main plan, and it's changed so much, guys. I mean, it has. But I think our main plan is to do what we're doing now, get the house ready and the farm ready here, and then start possibly once once it all falls into place. If I get, You know what? The main thing is the pond right now. But let's just say the guy hits water and the pond's to go. Mm-hmm. We get the pond built then we'll start with house construction. It's just well, what I think. And I think in between that, we will start setting posts for the goat fence. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get a goat pen ready. Um, we need a separate pen for the boys from the girls. Correct. It needs to be big enough for them to be able to graze and wander around. Goats aren't grazers. They're not necessarily interested in the grass, but more so 
on new right, right, you know, ground right, to right. where they have enough ground to where they're not going to wear that grass out. That's correct. Um, so, you know, I kind of feel like that'll be our next farming project. It's going to be starting to get some fence up for them. I agree. And, I agree. And it'll be gradual. We're not going to load everything up and in, no. in three days get everything moved out there. No. It's, that's not going to happen that way. No, it's not. Um, I feel like it'll be, and we've already started, you know, moving some, I would call it junk, um, stuff that, that we aren't using yeah. that needs to find a new home. Like we took our generator over there. We took our generator over there so we could power the barn that has no power. That will stay there unless we see that we need it to come back here right. for a storm or something right. like that. But just a little bit at a time, yeah. things that, that we can do without moving to the barn, moving to the, you know, little pole barn, mm-hmm. to the little shed area. Um, and we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to do that. And we're going to get power to the barn, hopefully, in the next few months. Um, get the barn completely cleaned out. Figure out how to put a door, a bigger door on it. Or mm-hmm. we may take the whole front off and make it open. We don't know yet. But we'll see how that works. And then we can start moving some more stuff over there. So it's going to be gradual. It's not going to be Overnight. some big, humongous, gigantic move. We're paying movers ten grand to move everything for us. And I think as we get further along, we've decided we're going to take our little gazebo that has our watering station. Yes. We'll work on moving that over there. Is that way we're not one week. Yeah. We're closing on our house right. here in one week and we've got to move everything. We don't want it to be like that. We want it to be, you know, we move the sweet shop over there, which is Jason's mm-hmm. gardening shed. Mm-hmm. Move it over there. And then it might be a month. And maybe a greenhouse. Move, maybe move a greenhouse, yeah. but uh, move me across trampoline. Yep. And that way we won't feel like we're just so compacted with time to do everything. Correct. So um, what else do you have? Um, you know, I really don't have anything right now. I think I've said everything I needed to say. So you got we, anything? Um, well, hmm, I think that's it. I think that's it, except for that we are going to go over to the 40 um, and test this internet out. Yeah, I'm going to try my Facebook experiment, and I think it. I think it's right. Um, I got some buddies of mine that, you know, I got Wes at the Naked Hog, who is, a, you know, such good friends of ours and actually works for us, helps us out a lot. And my good friend Chad at Adler Farm, we all three upload to Facebook, and we all three have the same issue with Facebook. And Chad's got fast internet, but he said he still has an issue because it takes so long on Facebook. And Wes is like me with the internet. Matter of fact, he's got the one that um, Living Traditions has. I forget what it's called, but it's still hard to upload. And I told him, because when the light bulb went off, I was like, man, I, I think I got it. So I started doing research on it, and then I told him what Facebook's max um max uh upload variances were and their criteria were and they were all so happy so i think they're waiting on me to to test this out and see if it works i think it's gonna work with three brains working together y'all ought to be able to figure it out out. and then chad told me he said you're the only person i know that would think like that Well, if I had been with you, I would have been running your mouth and then you wouldn't have been thinking. So you wouldn't have came up with the idea. So there have been instances here lately where Jason has gone over to the 40 with Arlo and uploaded a video or checked on the pics. And Mary Carl and I stayed here because she's um, a pre-teenager. She wants to go to the swimming pool. I make mm-hmm. that happen. Um, you know, we, we, we're not going to put her life out because we have a lot going on so right we're carrying on as normal with things that she wants to do and that's Correct. one of the reasons that um jason has made a couple of trips by himself but it's worked out and plus too we've done things like you know you've gone and got sod yes and i went to there and uploaded that's right so and you then, know we were killing two birds and one stone with time wise so this <laughs> this is our plan just so y'all know what we've got going on we are finishing this podcast jason's gonna run his checks and everything we're gonna take the video over to the 40 the podcast video Mm -hmm. upload it um do a little video while we're over there Mm -hmm. that'll come out on saturday Mm -hmm. and then come back here to go pick up some sod this Mm -hmm. afternoon Mm -hmm. to wait on a delivery of rocks Mm -hmm. for the driveway and and such and all this has got to happen before sundown. And then put the side out. 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we make that, it happen. That <laughs> that's where we are. And then Jason's got to squeeze in some TV time with Mary Carl before bed. Yeah, we got to squeeze in TV time. Yep. So that's what's going on. That's what's going on, and that's what's going to continue to go on. But hey, I'm not tired. I'm happy. I'm me too. happy you're home with us. I mean, yeah, me, me too. It's, I've enjoyed it so, 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 so much. I don't know what we did without you because it, it, it's a full-time job being here. It is a full-time And thinking, you know, what all we have accomplished, you know, house-wise here, all the sod we've put out, yes. all the groundwork we've had done, yes. the stuff that I've, you know, the stairs, the handrail and the stairs need to be replaced. I mean, yes, we redid our stairs um, back probably a year ago. Mm-hmm. We had pine stair treads and we put tile throughout the house and we didn't like the look of the pine stain. Yeah. So we put oak treads on the stairs yep. and... um we wanted a dark stain on them, so we did that. We redid the stairs. However, we haven't had a handrail. Haven't had the handrail. So because we haven't yep. had time to do it. So Jason got the handrail put up, and mm-hmm. the stairs are matching the handrail now. So and they're they're forecasting tropical f- tropical conditions. F- what three to six days of rain coming up? So hopefully, I can finish painting the foyer. Yes. And then we can get finish the shower. That's or, right. So I mean, so. We got stuff we got to do. We got stuff we got to do. And we got the Airstream to work on. That's yes. coming up too. Yes. <laughs> and we got the little O to fix. Oh gosh, I forgot about that. Don't forget about it. Mm. It's still going to be there. I know. It'll be there waiting on us. It's I not know. going anywhere. And neither are y'all. So <laughs> um, thank y'all for joining us. I hope you enjoyed Mary Carl talking about chicken combs. Yes. And y'all continue to send questions. Just remember when you write a question on the podcast itself, end it with a question mark. And that way we can search questions and it yep. comes up easy. It comes up way easier. Um, that everything way. with a question mark will come up. So if you have a question, do that and we'll try to answer it. And um, in the meantime, y'all be good. Bye.